the natural forest is regarded as having seven stories, as they say. The top story being uh, tall, uh, light-demanding trees. The second story is short, uh, shade-tolerant trees. The third story is the shrub level. The fourth, the herbaceous. The fifth comprises plants that spread horizontally. The sixth is the rhizosphere, or root area. And the seventh is the uh, vertical layer, comprising uh, climbers and creepers. As far as possible, this whole garden is kept permanently mulched throughout the year. Mulching not only helps to build up the fertility of the soil and suppress weeds, but it provides ideal conditions for the soil organisms, that is, conditions that are relatively warm and dry in the winter and relatively cool and moist in the summer, which are the conditions which are relished by the living soil organisms, such as earthworms and innumerable microfauna and microfungi, which are the main sources of fertility. An extremely interesting subject, which is being studied, especially in the Far East, is the relationship between different plants. That is a study that is very much in its infancy in the West, the way that certain plants seem to benefit each other, stimulate each other's growth, and ward off each other's pests and diseases. This shows four of the seven layers of the natural forest. First, this is an old pear tree which constitutes what is called the canopy, that is the highest layer of the, the seven layer of the natural forest. Then the low tree layer, this is a stag's horn sumac, which the Americans call a lemonade tree, which constitutes the low tree layer of shade tolerant short trees. Below that is the shrub layer consisting of uh, currants, gooseberries, and other soft fruit bushes. This, for instance, is a black currant. Below that is the uh, herbaceous layer consisting of herbs such as this uh, apple mint and that woundwort. Starting from the uh, shrub layer or low tree layer, this is a Japanese wine berry, a very choice berry, which the Japanese make into wine. <laughs> um, below that, <coughs> covering the ground, is this, uh, which is also a member of the same raspberry, blackberry family, called Rubus nutans, which spreads horizontally by underground rhizomes, so it's liable to turn up all over the place and it produces a small sweet berry. The sixth of the seven layers is the rhizosphere or roots layer where are grown plants that are cultivated for their roots or tubers. This is a, a plant called mashua which comes from the Andes where the potatoes also come from and it's a kind of small potato with a nasturtium-like flower, a very attractive flower of the nasturtium family. This is an example of the seventh layer, or vertical layer, consisting of climbers. In this case, a nasturtium and a runner bean, which are about to climb this old wild cherry tree. Last year, I had a nasturtium and a runner bean trained up an edible rowan, and they climbed almost to the top. 
It was strange to see runner beans in the branches of the, the rowan tree. Robert's near neighbour is psychotherapist Virginia Smith. They're currently exploring the links between personal and planetary health. Something you said last week, Robert, about unlocking the fertility of the soil. Can you, can you repeat that? Well, you quoted some words by William Blake saying that the, the mind of man is a garden already planted and sown, and it's a question of cherishing the plants that are already there. And I think it applies really very much to the, uh, to the, to the soil as well. They speak of uh, fertility being locked up in the soil. And one of the main aims of promoting fertility is fertility is not something that one puts on so much as releases that is already there. It's a question of uh, really allowing the activities of such things as soil roots and um, earthworms that make channels in the soil and therefore build up the circulating system so that the energy and fertility that's already in the soil is free to circulate. The advice I give to anyone who asks me how to start a forest garden from scratch is to plant an orchard of standard fruit trees at recommended intervals, that is about 20 feet each way. Then plant dwarf trees in midway between the standard trees. Plant fruit bushes, currants and gooseberries, in between the trees. And plant herbs and perennial vegetables on the, uh, on the ground level. Once it's established, the main work is uh, cutting back plants that try to encroach on each other, which is something that has to be done pretty well every day during the growing season, and keeping the soil well mulched, thus suppressing weeds and building up the fertility. I think it's possible to say that it is a system combining maximum output for minimum labor. <laughs>